morning, class. Today is Monday, June the 8th of 2020. Day 43 of Corona Chem for period one, grade 11, U and AP. I gave you a mock test on, I think it was Thursday or Wednesday. I, I took a two day break because I was noticing that nobody was watching the videos that I was posting. So I realized you guys must be busy doing something else. So I gave you a chance to catch up and I caught up myself. I did a bunch of marking and I'm still not done. I have a few more things to go through. So if you haven't received an answer from me, don't panic just yet. I still have to go through about 200 emails. So um, this is the first answer to the mock test. This is question number 395. Let me read it to you. It says, uh, the fat stored in the hump of a camel is a source of both energy and water. Calculate the mass of water produced by metabolism of one kilogram of fat, assuming the fat consists entirely of tristerian. Tristerian is camel fat. Assuming the fat consists entirely of tristerian, C57H110O6, a typical animal fat. Just realized I may have not balanced it correctly. Let me just double check. Well, I'll, I'll do that with you. Um, yeah, a little bit about how camels can walk long distances in the desert without drinking water. This is how. They have a store of fat in their hump, which they bur burn, which they oxidize in metabolism. The net reaction is essentially this. They, they, this is the fat. It combines with the oxygen that the camel breathes in, and it produces metabolic carbon dioxide and water, both of which are excreted when they're not needed. But a camel has a very efficient respiratory system when it comes to keeping the moisture that it, uh, we normally would breathe out. Because as you know, when you breathe out, you're breathing out moisture and carbon dioxide. That's how you lose weight. Every time you breathe out, you're, you're a little bit lighter because you're breathing out the carbon dioxide from the fatty acid metabolism and glucose metabolism because your body does uh, oxidizes it slowly through a, a series of discrete steps in metabolism. But the net reaction looks like that. This is not what actually happens in your metabolism, but it's the net result of all the steps that take place in metabolism. So you breathe out water and carbon dioxide. In the, in the case of the camel, though, the camel's respiratory system is arranged so that he keeps as much of that metabolic water inside his body. So as he burns fat, he also releases the water he needs to avoid uh, dehydrating in the arid environments that we find in the desert. So it's an animal that's very well adapted to that environment. Anyway, continuing, if a thousand grams of tristerian are metabolized, how many grams of water will result, metabolic water? So we found the molar mass of tristerian, divided it by the mass of tristerian that was present, it gave us 1.12 moles of fat, and then we balanced the equation. Uh, I just want to double check that I balanced it correctly though. So we have 57 carbon atoms. So that's going to produce 57 carbon dioxides. So the, the carbon that was here is now going to be breathed out in the form of carbon dioxide. There's 110 hydrogens in the tristerian. So you're going to have to, the animal's going to generate 55 moles of water because why 55? Because 55 times two gives you the 110 hydrogens. Now we balance the oxygens. We have 57 times two oxygens here, which is 104. 104 plus the 55 from the water, it gives you uh, 159. And then there's the six from the water. So I may have, I may have uh, added them up wrong there. Hold on a second. Seven times two gives you 114. Sorry, 114 plus the 55 gives you, gives you 169, uh, and then minus the six from the tristerian. So that gives you 163. So 163 over two. I just had that. I had a feeling I put the wrong number here. This is 163 over two. Uh, so, the, but the proportion we're interested in, this is just for the sake of balancing it properly, the proportion we're con uh, concerned with is the 1 to 55 ratio of tristerian 
the molecules of water produced. So for every one mole of tristerin that's uh, metabolized, 55 moles of water are produced, and this is where the camel uh, stores its water. It literally does store it in its hump because the hump is mostly fat. So uh, 1.12 moles of fat times 55 moles of water produced for every one mole of fat, which is 61.69 moles of water. Multiply that by the molar mass of water, gives you 1,111 grams of water. We're going to report it to two significant figures, so the final answer is 1.1 times 10 to the 3 grams of water, or you could say 1.1 kilogram of water from basically a, a kilogram of the fat. It's an incredible amount of metabolic water that is produced. So the animal essentially doesn't have to drink for a much longer time because if, it, if he manages to keep that water inside his body, it extends the amount of time uh, that he uh, can go without drinking. The next question we had was 3101. Question number two in our mock test, but it comes from question number 101 from chapter three of the textbook. Here is the question. Consider a sample of calcium carbonate in the form of a cube, measuring 2.005 inches on each edge. If the sample has a density of 2.71 grams per centimeter cubed, how many oxygen atoms does it contain? It's a multi-step calculation. Not overly difficult, but we'll do it step by step and we'll see how it works out. So our cube is 2.005 inches aside. So we're going to cube that quantity. So that means it's a cubic measurement of 8.060150013 inches cubed. We're going to convert that to centimeters by saying times 2.54 centimeters per inch, but remember to cube the conversion factor, and what you get as an answer is 132 cubic centimeters. Now we're going to use density is equal to mass over volume. We're trying to solve for the mass of a thing, so we're going to bring that V up. Density times volume is going to give you the mass. The density of the substance that the cube is made of is 2.71 grams per centimeter cubed times the fact that there's 132.08 etc. centimeters cubed means that you end up having 357 grams of substance. And that substance is calcium carbonate with a molar mass of 40.078 for the car, uh, calcium, 12.011 for the carbon, and 3 times 15.394 for the oxygen, yielding a molar mass of 100.0872 grams per mole. You have them at that many grams and that many grams per mole. Uh, is that actually, yeah, we need that. So uh, 357, etc., divided 100, etc., gives you 3.576308.97 moles of calcium carbonate. What are they asking you though? How many oxygen atoms? Well, there's an Avogadro's number of formula units, meaning an Avogadro's number. If you have that many moles of calcium carbonate, then multiply that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 to find how many molecules of calcium carbonate. And then for each formula unit, there's three oxygen atoms, so times three 0 0.0 atoms per one formula unit. And formula units cancel, not on T, but unit. Formula units cancel, and your final answer is 
um, 6.46 times 10 to the 24 atoms of oxygen. That's the second question. If you got that right, congratulations. It's what I was hoping to get you to be able to do by the end of the year. If you can't do it yet, go through it, practice it, look at what I did, and then try to reproduce it on your own without looking at my answer. That's how you will achieve the capacity to think these problems through on your own. The next problem in our mock test was 498. It was uh, chapter 4. Chapter 4, 98. A 35 milliliter sample of 1 molar KBr and a 60 milliliter sample of a 0.6 molar KBr are mixed. The solution is then heated to evaporate water until the heated volume, total volume is 50 milliliters. What is the molarity of the KBr in the final solution? That's in my fourth notebook. One second here. Okay. Start by reading the equation that is involved with all the chemicals that are in it. So potassium bromide aqueous plus uh, another solution of potassium bromide aqueous are mixed together to form uh, still more of the solution, but they're heated. So heat is applied and water is evaporated off. Let's break down what each one contains. A one molar solution, of which there are 35 milliliters, and a 0 0.600 molar solution, of which there are 60 milliliters. And at the end, you're left with a 50 milliliter solution, but you're asked what the molarity is. So we're going to use N is equal to MV to find out the moles of KBr here. And uh, what you get is 1.0 is the molarity. The volume is 35 one thousandths of a liter. So that the number of moles is 0 0.035 moles of KBr. Same calculation over here. Um, has a molarity 0.600. Volume is 600 one thousandths of a liter. No, sorry, 61 thousandths of a liter. Yielding a, an amount of 0 0.36. I wrote the wrong thing here. 0 0.035, and this is 0 0.036. When you add these two quantities together, you get 0 0.071 moles KBr in 50 milliliters of solution. So let's find out the molarity, saying that uh, since number of moles divided by the volume gives you molarity, if you have the number of moles is 0 0.071, and it's dissolved in 51 thousandths of a liter, what you get is a molarity of 1.42. And that's your final answer. Okay. The last question I asked in the mock test was number 105. 
A solution of sodium chloride is prepared by dissolving 1.28 grams of the salt in water to form a one liter solution. To form a solution of sodium chloride of the same molarity and volume, what mass of sodium chloride would be needed? This is question number four of your mock test. Um, it's number 105 in chapter four. So the first thing is to find out what the molar mass of sodium chloride is. So sodium is 22.98977. Chlorine is uh, 35.4527. Oxygen is 15.394, of which there are three in this formula. You're going to get a grams per mole mass. Turns out it's 106.44067 grams per mole. Uh, and you are told that you have 1.28 grams in a 1.0 liter solution. Let me just double check it. So that gives you, uh, since, um, since the molarity is equal to the number of moles over the volume, we have 1.28 grams at 106 uh, grams per mole, and then the volume is one liter. So we're gonna say uh, molarity equals the number of moles, so 1.28 grams divided by the molar mass, 106.44067 grams per mole. That's gonna give you moles. That's the top part of that. And then there's one liter of solution. So the molarity of the solution comes out to 1.2025. 4786 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. So now we have to produce a solution that has the same molarity, but now we're dealing with sodium chloride instead of chlor chlorate. So again, we have to calculate the molar mass, 22.98977. It's kind of a tedious problem, but it's not difficult. Molar mass of sodium chloride turns out is 90.8. Four four one two seven grams per mole. We want this molarity with this substance, so we're going to say uh, number of moles divided by volume equals the molarity, but we're solving for the number of moles, same volume. So we're going to say the number of moles is going to be the molarity times the volume. The molarity has to be 1.2025, etc. And the volume has to be um, one liter. So number of moles is going to be sorry, no, I'm doing something wrong here. Uh, the molarity is this, there's one liter, so that's the number of moles you need. If you need that many moles and uh, you've got that many grams per mole, you're just going to write 1.202547, times 10 to the minus 2 moles, times the grams per mole, you're going to get a quantity of, in grams, because grams per mole multiplied by, so grams per mole multiplied by moles will cause moles to cancel, you'll get an answer in grams. Your answer in grams turns out to be 1.087-599-56 grams, or after sig figs, you round it down to 1.09 grams. So you need 1.09 grams of sodium chloride to give you a solution with the same number of with the same molarity as 1.28 grams of sodium chlorate. Okay, there's your four questions for the mock test. 
I'd like you to try for your next mock test. I'll give you another one. So try it tonight. Do n minus one. So for the last mock test, well, I'll just write them down. Tonight's mock test. Now keep keep trying, folks, because tomorrow we'll review this one. And the day after tomorrow, I'll give you the test. So this is your chance to catch up and do, uh, do really well. And if you do really well on these tests, my discretion, if you prove to me that you've learned the material, I'm going to ignore everything you did before, before all this started. And I'm going to give you the mark based on that. Okay, big opportunity. Don't waste it. So here's your four questions. Three ninety four. Uh, three one oh. Three one hundred. Four ninety seven, and four one oh four. Do those tonight. Tomorrow we'll review it. And uh, we've got much more practice for you, and we have the real test, okay? So I'll see you tomorrow.